all of the sports come on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to the Sports Combo with Big Q and the guy we talking to all the things here, man. Covering the OTAs part two, week two, whatever you want to call it, uh, this past OTA period. We just got to break it down. Mike Thomas to talk about some plays and some players. Cameron Meredith. Uh, DC, you was talking about um, Jimmy Crawler here. Could you, could you finish? Shit, actually, I was talking about Patrick Robinson um, and him playing at number two. We actually tried that before when he was a... Uh, a saint prior to being a saint now you know and uh he looked better at the two than he did at the one but we still had issues with him but uh what philly was able to figure out that he played very well in the slot so i don't think all hope is gone for ken crawley but i think there is a chance that he could be in contention for his spot because uh p rob he he gonna get you some picks and you know with marshawn Lattimore on one side they definitely going to be throwing that ball on the other side. So you definitely want a guy over there that's going to get you some turnovers. Ken Crawley may come up with one every now and again, but he's not really known for being a ball hawk. Well, that's something we talked about all break, and that's that's one of the things that we're going to get into is one of the topics we're going to talk about is Patrick Robinson's role here. Of course, you know they signed Patrick Robinson to a multi-year deal with about $20 million, I think $10 million of his Four guarantee. Years, so huh? he, right, he got so he, it was $5 million signing bonus, so Patrick Rob, or P. Rob, as he's called, is a guy that comes back here. The Saints put up good money for him and Kirk Coleman. So the, when the money's on the line, everybody I mean, always want to come home with us, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's good to come home when you got this kind of cooking and this kind of atmosphere out here. But uh, like I said, Patrick Robinson and Kirk Coleman, two very interesting secondary signers because they bring veteran leadership to a very young uh, secondary. And uh, they spent good money on both these guys, $18 million for – Kurt Coleman, twenty million for Patrick Robinson. So you know we saying, well, this guy's going to play the nickel. This guy's going to be the third safety. We're going to challenge that. We're going to challenge that on the show because you're not going to give these guys that kind of money to come in and be reserve players. So these guys are getting paid this kind of money to come here and make an impact. But we're going to talk about that later on. Let's finish talking about some of the other guys during the OTAs. Uh, Elvin Kamara. Do you see Elvin Kamara? Looks pretty good. We watched some footage on all. Watched him run around out there in OTAs. He looks a little heavier to me. Looks a little heavier. Still very fast. Still very elusive. Still uh, so much as the the rookie, uh, the um, rookie of the year uh, that he is. You know, even improved. So obviously he's getting prepared for the extra workload that he anticipating. Even though the Saints said they're not going to give him any extra. Um, Workload because of the absence of Mark uh, Ingram. Don't believe that, man. I'll have to bring back some of the special effects from uh, Sean Payton, liar. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that not believe that part. He said about that. I got a, I got two bridges to sell to you across the Mississippi River in New Orleans. If you believe that crap. Spoiler and, alert. And, and, Sean Payton said he was going to give uh, Kamari five extra carries. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing. About five extra. Five extra you know, but yeah, they were right. uh, they were saying, uh, will he get the full fifteen? I really think he's not lying. I don't think he's gonna give him Mark Ingram full fifteen carries. But um, Alvin Kamara is definitely gonna get a shot for at least four weeks to be the guy. Um, we've never had a running back like him, and in, in the Saints building, period. You never had a do it all guy. Uh, basically a complete back, other than what Adrian Peterson. And he was probably, you know, on the wrong side of 30. So you got a few other guys that's going to get some touches like B. Scott, um, Jonathan Williams, uh, Trey Edmonds, uh, Daniel Lasko. They got to figure out how they're going to do that with all them guys. But Kamari, man, uh, he's about six foot two ten. I don't understand why everybody feel like he's small and he can't handle it. It's it's just funny to me every time I they say that. He's bigger than some guys that are number one running backs already. But for whatever reason, everybody thinks he's small and he can't take a pound in and he can't do this and he can't do that. And all he does is line up and play. So I think the same thing's going to happen. And um, eventually, when we don't sign Mark Ingram, you're probably going to see Alvin Kamara out there looking 
Something like Todd Gurley, man. Like I said, he might be the first guy in recent memory to get a thousand yards receiving, a thousand yards rushing. I'm not sure if it's been done before. Maybe it has, but he'll probably be the first guy to bring it back. Well, I mean, if, if that's the case, of course, we know about the fact that uh, when Elvin Kamara could bring to the to, to Saints, uh, looking at some of his statistics from the previous year, rushing-wise, 120 attempts, 728 rushing yards, averaged about six yards to carry. Uh, excellent, excellent running back. Had uh, had eight, t- eight, t- eight, touchdown, eight touchdowns running the ball, averaging 45 yards a game rushing as a wide receiver. Now, he, of course, he was second behind Mark Ingram in rushing. That goes as far as the wide receiver goes. He was second uh, on the team in catches, behind only the great Mike Thomas, who had 104. This guy had 81, 81 catches for 826 yards, averaged 10 yards a catch, had five touchdowns. Can you uh, imagine how much more efficient he could be as a receiver if we had more wide receivers? Yeah, we're going to get an opportunity to see that, D.C., because, man, you had uh, Cameron Mary, you had Trey Klein Smith to the mixture. Hey, man, we're going to see an opportunity to see how great Elvin Kamara is with all I mean, of the Drew pressure off these wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, Drew got just, – just put that just put three more years on he probably, Drew. He like, probably – uh, Drew probably ain't sleeping, man. <laughs> nah, he, he, he jumping at the pit to get going, man. I didn't know doubt about it. But let's segue from one running back to another. We went from Elvin Kamara, let's go to Bo Scott. Bo Scott, of course, Austin Scott, the running back out of Louisiana Tech, draft pick for the Saints. Uh, they took him in the sixth round of this past uh, NFL draft. And he's a, a guy a lot of people, including D.C., compares to Darren Sproul. I think D.C. even went as far as can saying that he could be uh, uh, close to P.F. Thomas. I haven't heard anybody. Uh, I, I said uh, um, he he is Darren Sproul, but, yeah, I did compare him to P.F. Thomas because a lot of people don't know about Boston Scott. Is He's incredibly strong. And unlike Darren Strohs, he's not looking to run around you. People, people don't realize that about Boston Scott, but they're going to learn. He has leverage. He runs like a little bowling ball. He can run you over, but he can shake you. So to me, he was like a, a, a mixture between uh, Pierre and Darren Strohs by him being excellent in the screen game and the type of role that he's probably going to get is going to be similar to Pierre Thomas instead of the Darren Strohs role, which Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara clearly already has. Right. It's going to be interesting to see both Scott because he'll get plenty of opportunities based on the fact that Mark Ingram is going to be out for the Would it be funny to have a, four weeks. a power back that's 5'8"? <laughs> it would be. It was a guy that the Saints had a couple of years ago. Remember, he runs really team, good uh, up the middle, though, man. That's what people want to know about Mark Scott. He runs good what? inside. That was a, a it, running back that the had two years ago. But uh, actually, was last. Year. Was oh, last I remember year. that that little short guy. He was uh, moving. The short guy was a bowling ball. Yeah, he was a little bowling ball. And then him remember. and Trey Mine Edmonds. Trey, Trey, uh, Trey. Edmonds, and they ended up picking Trey over him. And I was like, why did you guys not get that little bowling ball back? I forgot. I'm gonna look up his name. Jonathan, I, I think it was similar to the guy we got on the team now. It was Jonathan something. I remember his first name was Jonathan. I don't remember his last name. I don't know where he wound up going. But I think that's all he could do, though. He wasn't, um, he wasn't picking up the he black machines. He couldn't catch right. the ball out the backfield. Like you know, he just had that one thing. You know, the Saints don't really like that. You got to be multi-talented over here. Yeah, that's definitely a prerequisite for hanging around with this team, no doubt about it. But Bo Scott looking for a lot of big things from Bo Scott uh, moving ahead. Uh, taking a look at the, oh, she's dealing with the Saints. Uh, Next move, we're going to talk next topic, we're going to talk about Patrick Robinson. We're going to go into that. Because we talked about Patrick Robinson before we touched upon it, but Patrick Robinson's addition to this team brings a very interesting perspective. Uh, a lot of people say Patrick Robinson will come in and be the third cornerback um, to, you know, behind, obviously, Marshawn Lattimore and Ken Crawley before you walk it. When it comes down to it, we look at it and say, well, let's investigate this a little further, D.C. Me and you talked about this off-break. We talked about this prior to the show. Very deep discussion on it. Patrick Robinson role, in my opinion, looking at the money that they paid him, they gave him four year deal worth twenty million with ten million of a guarantee. You don't give a third string running back that kind of money and say, Well, you're gonna be our nickel guy. I think that the Saints I think that Patrick Robinson with his skill, 
and his ability, his smarts, his uh, his ability. Right now, he's a better cornerback than Ken Crawley. Maybe down the line, Ken Crawley can surpass him. But right now, in my opinion, I think that he is a better cornerback than Ken Crawley. I think you agree with me on that. This is the question. Patrick Robinson, I say when it starts, Patrick Robinson will definitely push to take Ken Crawley's job. What you say about that? Um, I definitely think he's going to try to push, but I have to disagree. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, Patrick Robinson. Darius Victor. Darius Victor. Is Dar- the name was Darius Victor? Oh, man, I was way off. Darius Victor. Well, I got Jonathan. The name. All right. Glad to be. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, Pat- Patrick Robinson is perfect in the slot, so I don't see why you would want to mess that up. Um, and you probably won't want to overuse him on the outside. Maybe he gets some plays on the outside depending on matchups. Um, what receivers we're playing against. If we're playing a guy that's too fast for Ken Crawley, maybe we put Patrick Robinson out there. If they're playing a guy that's big, you put Ken Crawley out there. He's obviously bigger. He's more physical. Um, Ken Crawley is a very good cornerback. And I think, as usual, the Saints are ahead of the curve. We've been implementing slot receivers before they were popular. And now I think the new phase in NFL is you basically have to have three starting cornerbacks. So as usual, I think the Saints are just ahead of the curve. We paid a guy, and then he got $20 million, but, I mean, come on, man, it's over four years. You know what I'm saying? That's probably the same money. Ken Crowley will probably get the exact same deal. Michonne Lattimore is the only guy that's going to get super paid back there. Um and that's five million dollars a year, so it's it's not a lot of money, uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I don't think he he does enough to overtake uh, Ken Crawley at the second position because, as you know, Ken Crawley isn't great in the slot. So why would you why would you mess that up? I don't know. I think Ken Crawley could be a pretty damn good slot man. You know, I think I think he has the ability to play the slot. He's big, he's physical, and I think his skills kind of lend him to play in the slot position. Uh, but big you know, and physical but, ain't what you want in the slot, though. You want you got you want speed quick and, you want quick twitch and fast. He, he has speed to play the, the, the cornerback position in the slot. He has the speed. He has the physicality because still you want twitchy and twitchy, but you still got a guy that can put hands on him and be physical with him in the slot. And Ken Crawley does have the attributes to be able to lend him to plan in the slot position. The thing is, while I say what I say about Patrick Robinson overtaking him in that, uh, uh, in overtaking him is that, you know, I, I, like I said, I like Ken Crawley. I think Ken Crawley came from a long way off to become the solid cornerback that he is, but he makes a lot of lot of stupid mistakes. Too many pass interference. He holds entirely too much. If he wanna hold, be a little bit more slick with it. Study some take on Deion Sanders or whomever. The guy that's, that's used to putting your hands on guys, being physical with them, but no one to take the hands off the guys. Not holding them and putting your arms around. He does a lot of boneheaded plays that really kind of get you pissed with him. But but he's a he's a solid cornerback to me. Fifty four total tackles on a on a season. At one interception last year. Very commendable numbers for King Crawley. But I think Patrick Robinson's a little bit more heady. I think Patrick and him, uh, I guess it's a guy that's got a nose for the ball. And you're right. Patrick can't play. A, he's, a, he's an ideal corner man, and you need three really solid cornerbacks to play that position. But I would not be surprised if people pushed, would ask the question, if you would ask which one of these guys would lose their jobs to the guy behind him, I would put my money and say, well, Pat, Patrick Robinson has a solid camp, and he comes in and does what he was doing in, with Philadelphia and continues to build on his solid because he, he had the problem of his career right now. So if if I think that Patrick Robinson could consider to be that solid player, there's no doubt in my mind that I think that he could possibly push past Ken Crawley for that position. But anyway, D.C., that's that discussion. Let's move into our other discussion we're going to talk about with Kirk Coleman, and this is your most animated uh, topic we were talking why, about why you gotta put me out there like this it's my move animated what's that, what's that about man and let me tell the people man we're about to well we're about to you lucky we're about to go into our break man but um <laughs> DC argued me for almost nah. two hours y'all two almost hours. two that hours man don't put that on me he argued me about two hours come on y'all who y'all man. that brother long one is me or him uh, DC. <laughs> you definitely won a long winter the award, brother. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but anyway, we're about to go into our next break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to talk about a very important topic dealing with Kirk Coleman. Where does Kirk Coleman sit in the grand scheme of things as far as uh, the things put him? Why would you give a guy $18 million, three years, the first guy that you sign coming into the new year on the back end defense? Who's the odd man out here? Who's the odd man out? We'll look into this and we'll talk about this more. We also are uh, going to talk about our top catalyst discussion on the other side of the table. So stay with us. You're listening to the fourth coma. Thank you and the guys. <laughs> 